everyone. Hello. Oh, Tony, you were right. Nobody showed. Oh, we're waiting for a few uh, folks to come on in, but I would like to welcome you here tonight. My name is Lisa Ludwig. I am the co-president of the Theater District Association and co-chair of Curtain Up. And on behalf of our board and the members of the TDA, uh, we welcome you here tonight as we kick off the 41st in-person Curtain Up here in Western New York. September 13th, uh, we're going to kick off the night with a cocktail party over at Shea's Grand Lobby. There are only a few tickets left, so if you have not gotten them. <laughs> the bar closes. Uh, 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 Mr. Chase will be getting his start today, and we are so honored the Theater District Association to be able uh, to give that to him. And I'd also like to say a special shout out to all of our past recipients who are here tonight. Uh, just wave your hand if you are here. I know some. We have Javier, we have Stephen, Peter, and so many other deserving people out in the Plaza Star. So it is a, a thrill. Let's give our co-chair and our co-president another round of applause. Isn't she an absolutely fantastic job tonight? 41 years. You know, someone teased me earlier and she said, I don't know how old you are, but my husband started this out and I just laughed and I said thank you. But I really, really took that moment in. 41 years ago, I would have been three years old. <laughs> right? So, I did not appreciate and couldn't appreciate the theater 41 years ago, but I'm looking out at this wonderful group of people from all walks of our city. Some who are here in front of us that I performed with 20 years ago and bid him sing. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> just taking me under his wing all those years ago, because he had no idea that that theater major would go on to become a deputy mayor, and in January go on to become a Buffalo City Court judge. He didn't know that. He just knew. Oh. He was just being kind. He was just being a good person, like so many people in this great theater district. They just want to pour into others and appreciate the great culture here. Some of those people are here with us, like our council member, Fillmore District Council member, Mitch Nolkowski. <laughs> like the Honorable Penny Wolfgang. <laughs> and certainly, Mitch doesn't do it all by himself. He has a wonderful partner by his side, Judge. Gary Wilson. Yeah. I could go on and on and talk about all the great things that Curtain Up does for our city. But as our co-president and co-chair said, tonight's all about Tony. And it's about you getting your star, but I'd be remiss in saying that you already didn't blaze trails, right? He was instrumental. For those who don't know, and putting the city's very first LGBTQ exhibit up in the city hall this year. Please recognize. <laughs> and Tony, as you get honored today, soak up every moment. You, your husband, your beautiful family deserve every recognition. You make so many people who are not seen so many people who are not heard feel represented, feel like they belong. I'm so proud of you. So I'm going to read some of your proclamation, if I may. Whereas it is the tradition of this city, this state, and this nation to pay tribute to those individuals whose dedication and whose contributions to their communities 
provide hope and inspiration for future generation. Whereas Anthony, as the world calls you, but as your friends say, Tony, attended Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, where he was the President's Fellow in Theater Arts. Later, he earned his PhD in English with a concentration in dramatic literature. And those of you who know Tony, he can be just a little bit dramatic. So I think, <laughs> I think that PhD is getting a lot of mileage. <laughs> and whereas Lisa Ludwig, Curtin Up co-chair and executive director of Shakespeare in Delaware Park states, Anthony's remarkable contributions to Buffalo's theater community make him a true star. The Theater District Association is thrilled to honor his invaluable influence and celebrates his legacy as he takes his rightful place among some of Buffalo's brightest stars. And whereas Curtin Up recognizes the evolution and the persistence of professional theater, as well as signifying the start of the theater season. This week-long celebration culminates in the party within the Main Street Theater District on Friday, September 13th, that features live performances, gourmet food, and dancing. And as I conclude, now therefore be it resolved that I, the Deputy Mayor, on behalf of our Mayor, and standing before some of our friends who represent the Governor, like Bonnie, who are here today, I do hereby proclaim September 9th, 2024, as Dr. Anthony Chase Day in the City of Buffalo. <laughs> and legacy. 
engaging in conversation with him or hearing him spar with others is delightful and educational. However, none of that is why he is receiving so richly deserving a star on this plaza of stars. It is for the unprecedented and lasting contribution he has made to Buffalo theater community. For his 27 years profiling our city's theaters and performance, and performance artists as theater editor for Jamie Moses' Art Boys, for hosting Yes Indeed, hosting theater talk on WBFO with Jim Santella and Peter Hall, encouraging audiences for 30 years for creating and producing Buffalo's annual theater awards celebration, The Audis. And I must say, for his amazing and ever-evolving theater memoir, My Life in the Audience. If you have not seen that show, you must. You must. And you must continue to do it and, and continue to, to be as irreverent as you are. <laughs> and finally, and perhaps most importantly, his contribution to the American theater through educating and mentoring future artists and arts administrators. students come back and tell you how much you meant to their journey. And you don't need them to become actors or, or, or critics. Or you, you, they, can walk, they can become anything they like. And you, you know that in some ways the potential to be what you want to be came through their opening uh, of theater, that the theater had motivated. And now I know a young man who just happened to, to call me the other day to say he had reached out to Tony, uh, Ivan Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Ivan Rodriguez, who is, is where, where is he at? Stanford now, right? He finished Stanford. He's now in mental health care. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, you know, he's amazing. He's yeah. an amazing person. He's and uh, and yet was at Juilliard for many years. And he certainly, certainly credits you with being a wonderful influence, as do so many others. So with, uh, with that, uh, I, I, I must say, it's fabulous to be in this lobby to do this. Uh, I have many wonderful years here. And uh, uh, the only time I ever got a bad review from Tony is when I, he said I wasn't working here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what he means to this the city, what he has given, and what he will continue to give because he knows no other way. For that, he is more than worthy to join the stars in the Plaza of Stars. Thank you.
vote on that. <laughs> um, I am so grateful to be in the company of other people uh, who are in the plaza of stars. Neil, Neil Bradis, I'm grateful to be I thought, well, maybe, maybe Curtis and, and uh, Milky are here, but uh, look, 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 look. <laughs> Curtis, the founder of Lorna C. Hill. Vincent and Vincent and are here, and uh, and my husband Javier, who has a star. <laughs> It is unbelievable to see so many people from so many parts of my life. Also, Deputy Mayor, it's rare that someone from politics comes to the arts and gets it so right. I did <laughs> so well. But, uh, and Mitch, thank you. And Penny. Oh, we better stop. I cannot possibly do all this. But so many people. Um, my family. Um, people from the theaters. From WBFO. My friends from politics, from the gay community, including the Imperial Court of Buffalo. Where I am the second and best night of Buffalo, just by the way. From Buffalo State University. Um, people from my Buffalo Toronto public media Broadway trick group, thank you for that. We must do that again. Um, I cannot possibly mention everyone, but I, I love you all for, wow, being here, and I'm so grateful. Um, and if you think you recognize that effervescently cheerful red-headed woman from stage and film, um, yeah. you might have seen the television Cinderella with uh, Brandy and Whitney and Whoopi and Bernadette, and, um, or you may have seen the original Broadway company of Carolina Change or American in Paris. Or the original company of Neil Simon's The Dinner Party. Um, I, I first saw her in, or you may have seen Aaron Brockovich or Law and Order or Seinfeld <laughs> or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I first saw her um, in Florida of the Red Menace, Su Susan Stroman's Florida of the Red Menace, way back in the day when Deanne Cox was just 22 years old. Thank you, Deanne Cox, for coming. <laughs> So I want to, I haven't even gotten to the speech yet. So <laughs> I want to express my deepest gratitude to the Buffalo Theater District Association for this truly incredible honor. I honestly never expected to be honored in this way. When Bader, I see you. <laughs> Buffalo Toronto Public Media. And the truth is, I am both um, humbled and amazed that um, I believe Javier and I are the first married couple to be so recognized. <laughs> and how wonderful that for once it's a same sex couple that's supposed to be recognized. I remember when this stretch, this stretch, when I first came in 1981, this stretch of real estate was rather desolate. Um, we had the City Lights gay bar, we had the Villa Capri gay bar, he would die. We had the, the, we had the, 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 the Morgan's. Gay bath bathhouse. It was the oldest in America. Um, and Sybil. <laughs> Shays was all but dead. Alleyway was a police station. Um, and those police would go around the neighborhood on a Saturday night and they would write down the number of every Ontario license plate parked near a gay bar. And then when that car tried to enter the United States again, they would send them back. Oh. Fun time. <laughs> and a story I don't think I have ever told before, um, and I love telling my stories. That Phil and I thought and said this speech we should just do our whole cabaret act. <laughs> but I was worried about the piano tuning. So, <laughs> so Ian McNeil, who's now a Tony Award winner and an Olivier Award winner, but in those days we were right out of college, 1981, and Ian and I were a gay bashed on Tupper Street, right across from Studio Arena Theater against the wall. And that night was the night of the very first curtain call. And we were not injured, um, but we learned a lot that night. So in, in 
But that was then. <laughs> In preparation for today, I, I knew I wanted to be succinct, but not too brief. Uh, so this will only happen once. I asked artificial intelligence, who is Anthony Chase of Buffalo, New York? <laughs> I was gratified to learn that Anthony Chase is somewhat of a local celebrity in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Where he's been a significant figure in culture, the cultural landscape for, it's been said, several decades. Thanks a lot. <laughs> he has helped shape public discourse around theater in the region and has been instrumental in fostering a vibrant theater community, yes. He's known for his efforts to connect artists, theater companies, and audiences. Wow. Yes. Uh, it mentioned art forms. It mentioned WBFO, it mentioned the Buffalo News, it mentioned advocacy for LGBTQ plus rights and representation in the arts. And eventually, on the experience of looking myself up on artificial intelligence, it became a little bit creepy because it knew where I lived and it knew my phone number. <laughs> I thought that. Um, but when, when I arrived in Buffalo in 1981, um, I came to visit my brother, never intending to stay, but the city of Buffalo had other plans. This city, with its rich cultural history, and its potential, and its mostly wonderful people, <laughs> and meeting Javier, Buffalo quickly became my home. What I discovered here was more than a place to live. I found a small but vibrant theater community that became a large and burgeoning theater community. And it did not welcome me with open arms, because theater communities don't do that. <laughs> Unless you're Tracy Lane, or Jen Stafford, or Josephine Hogan, or Daryl Samir, you get my point. Okay. <laughs> but I had to earn my place inch by inch by inch. But the, the passion, creativity, and dedication I witnessed on Buffalo stages ignited something within me. And it wasn't long before I realized that my unexpected journey had led me exactly where I was meant to be. I'm particularly grateful to Jamie Moses, who entrusted Javier and me with overseeing theater coverage for Art Voice. That opportunity became a platform from which we could support and nurture the growth of Buffalo's theater community at a critical time in its history. It allows us to shine a spotlight on the incredible talent and hard work that graces our stages night after night. But Buffalo has given me much more than a career. And that's a good thing, because over the past year, nobody has paid me to write theater criticism. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in over 30 years, nobody has paid me. Um, journalism has changed. I now do it for the love of the art and for the public good, and we can all thank Buffalo State University for that by supporting that effort by employing me. <laughs> and I think the, the chairman of our theater department is here, and I think the cast of the Buffalo State Company of Antigone, Antigone, Anne-Louise Antigone, is here. Right. <laughs> With a charge to provide teaching, research, service, Buffalo State subsidizes theater talk, the Artie Awards, and everything I do. We should all be grateful for the higher education uh, institutions of our region. They sustain the arts here. But please remember, diminished though it may be, a daily locally, local newspaper is still the one best way to stay informed about what is happening in your city. And cities that lose their daily newspapers see an immediate increase in corporate and government corruption. Support your local daily newspaper, the Buffalo News. Yeah. As I express my gratitude today, I'm acutely aware that this occasion represents not just my work, but the collective efforts of countless actors, directors, writers, technicians, and the theater lovers who make Buffalo's theater scene so vibrant. To the Theater District Association, thank you for this recognition. To my fellow theater critics and scholars, and that means students, thank you for your camaraderie and your commitment to our craft. 
to the theaters, companies, and individual artists who have shared their work with us over the years. Thank you for your creativity, your dedication, and sometimes, yes, your courage. To my family and my husband, Javier, thank you for your love. And to the city of Buffalo, thank you for becoming my home. Sometimes, the most unexpected journeys lead us to exactly where we were always supposed to be. Thank you for this honor. for Shakespeare this summer. I felt it was my fault, but it's beautiful outside now. Uh, but before we go outside, if I can invite up uh, co-chair and co-president uh, Michael Russo, we'll do an unveiling here. Then we're going to go outside and uh, see the real star, and then we invite people to join us over at the Bijou uh, for a celebratory cocktail. And I hope to see each and every one of you. I'm Curtin up this Friday at the dinner, one of the shows at the, on the street party. Thank you all so much. And Vanna Michael Russo. <laughs> and three, two, one.